Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to explore one of the most controversial questions in the world of the locality boa. And that is the Guiana versus the Suriname red tail boa. Is there a difference? If so, what exactly are the differences? This is actually a very complicated issue and there are a number of different perspectives we have to consider before we arrive at an informed opinion on this. So hopefully you can watch this video and it'll give you some background from which you can formulate your own opinion on this very uh, contentious topic in the world of boa constrictor collecting. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel. I have a lot of cool ideas for videos on boa constrictors and please subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. So I'm going to start off this video by giving you the answer, what I feel is the answer to the question of is there a difference between the Suriname and the Guiana and Red Tail Boa. The answer is it depends. It depends on what you define as a difference and also from what perspective that you're asking the question. So today I want to explore some of the different perspectives and we'll consider different arguments for whether or not there's a difference between Guiana and and Suriname red tail boas. Before we get into that though, I wanted to do a little bit of a thought experiment. Let's say you had 20 Suriname red tail boas and 20 Guianan red tail boas with their uh, locality 100% verified. And you presented them to 10 boa constrictor experts and you asked them to identify which ones were the Surinams and which ones were the Guianan boas. How do you think that they would do? Do you think they would do better than 50%, which is basically random guessing? Well, I thought we would test that. And for this video, I wanna show you some different boas that are either Guianan or Suriname in their uh, supposed locality. And I want you to try to see if you can identify which is which. So we'll start with this particular animal. So I know that some of you have seen these animals already in my other videos, but I thought it would be kind of a fun activity to do. So uh, stay tuned. Later on in the video, I'm going to reveal the answers of which are the Surinams and which are the Gyan and BCC. So here we have BCC number two. Is this a Guiana or is this a Suriname? So just write that down. I'll reveal the answers a little later. So the first perspective I wanted to look at is a perspective of an extreme locality purist. And let's say for, for the argument's sake that you had gone to Guiana and Suriname and you had personally collected boas from both sides of the border. So you knew 100% that one came from Guiana, one came from Suriname, and they were far enough apart that they couldn't have just swam over the river from one country to the other. Now let's say that you did scale counts and there was no difference. They were both within the accepted scale counts. Um, there were, you did a bunch of DNA markers and you couldn't differentiate any genetic difference. And then you examine them physically and you can't tell any difference in the physical description. Does that mean that they're the same boa? Well, I would say from this perspective, they're still different boas because you're 100% sure one came from Suriname, one came from Guiana. There might be an underlying difference that we can't identify with any available technology, such as a genetic difference or some kind of behavioral difference. And even if there isn't, the fact that you are 100% sure one is from Guiana and one is from Suriname, that's enough of a difference right there. So from that perspective, you can definitely say, yes, there is a difference between the Guiana and the Suriname true red tail boas. So the perspective I just discussed is an extreme locality purist perspective. Honestly, I don't think very many people would subscribe to that perspective. I don't think I would. Um, so before we explore the next perspective, I wanted to show you boa number three. So make a mental note or jot down whether you think this is a Guiana or a Suriname BCC, and we'll reveal the answers in a few minutes. So I hinted on something in the last segment about collecting your, the boa yourself from Guiana or Suriname. And for any locality boa, unfortunately, the only way you can be 100% sure that the boa is of the stated locality is by collecting it yourself in the country of origin. 
And as we all know, this is really not going to be possible for all but a select few that live in the countries where the boas are native to. So people will often talk about paperwork. You know, does the boa come from with papers? Almost like it's a purebred dog or something. And I think people have a misconception of what these papers are. There's not some all-knowing committee of boa experts that issues this decree from on high that this is 100% a Guiana or 100% a Suriname boa. So what they mean by the paperwork, these are the receipts or the documentation that come with the boa from the breeder or the exporter. Um, often people will sell a snake that they bought from a breeder and they'll pass on the receipt. You know, the, the snake might change hands several times, uh, but they still have the original paperwork. And unfortunately, sometimes paperwork can get messed up, uh, either accidentally or fraudulently, and paperwork from one snake can go with another. So that happens. The other thing to consider is that there's something called, something called CITES paperwork. So what CITES is, is the Convention on International Trade and in Endangered Species. And this is the international body that regulates um, export of endangered species, including all boa constrictors. And so they issue these paperwork at the uh, port of export, and it will say, you know, the number of animals and it will say the export port. Unfortunately, this does not necessarily indicate where the boa constrictor came from. Often animals will be caught in the rainforest and then will be transported many, many miles to the point of export. For example, in Peru, boas are exported from Iquitos and from Pucallpa, but they can originate in many parts of the Peruvian rainforest. So just because you have the CITES paperwork doesn't necessarily indicate the animal came or originated from that potential, that uh, particular city. And it also doesn't indicate that that CITES paperwork even goes with that particular animal. So you just have to be very careful when you're looking at paperwork um, to determine the locality of a boa. Make sure that you work with breeders you can trust and that they're open and honest about the origin of the particular animal. A couple other things to consider is that many of the imported boas from South America are farm bred animals. And so the animals are maintained in a semi-wild type of environment until they give birth to babies. And then the adult animals are either released or they're uh, used for skins or they're exported as pets. Um, however, just because the animals are being farmed in a certain part of either Guyana or Suriname doesn't mean they originated there. And these animals may have come from um, other places in South America to these farms. Another thing to consider is that there are times when one of the two countries in the past has been closed to export. For example, if the, it was illegal or if there were no permits to export boas from Guyana, one of the common tactics that people would use is to collect the boas in Guyana, take them across the river into Suriname, and then they'd be exported out of Suriname. So there you have a boa that came from Guyana and it's being labeled and represented on the CITES uh, docu uh, paperwork as being from Suriname. The next thing I wanted to consider is whether there's any physical boundary between Guyana and Suriname that would prevent the two populations of boas from interbreeding and thus becoming effectively one contiguous population. So if we look at a map of South America, you can see Guyana and Suriname are two small countries in northern South America, north of Brazil. And the boundary between the um, western border of Suriname and the eastern border of Guyana is this river called the Quarantine River. So a river might be expected to provide some degree of separation between the two populations. However, we all know that boa constrictors are pretty good swimmers and they can cross the river by swimming, or alternately they can wrap around a large log or piece of wood or other debris and they can float from one side of the river to the other side. So rivers are really not effective boundaries. In fact, if we look at Guyana and Suriname, you can see there's a number of rivers in each of these countries that basically divide from the south to the north, but these don't really prevent boas from being able to interbreed with each other. 
So some other parts of the boa constrictor range, for example, um, in Colombia, you have the Andes Mountains, which divide the habitat of boa imperator from boa constrictor constrictor. And that does indeed prevent the genetic exchange between the two populations. Um, in Mexico, you have some populations of boas like the tar humara boa that are in a micro or a um, habitat in, at a high elevation surrounded by desert. And that also effectively prevents them from breeding with other populations of boa constrictors and it maintains them as a separate um, population. However, we don't really see that in Guiana or Suriname. So this is animal number four. So take a look at this snake. And do you think this is a Guiana or a Suriname red-tailed boa? And as I said, we'll review the we'll reveal the answers in a few minutes. The next perspective I want to explore is that of the physical description. Can we differentiate boas from Guiana versus Suriname based on differences in their physical description? And it's said that boas from Suriname tend to have an overall lighter background color. It's often tannish or buckskin. Um, they tend to have more symmetrical saddles that are often connected. Sometimes they have highly peaked saddles. Sometimes they have round saddles. And Suriname boas are said to have the longest, reddest, brightest tails like this particular specimen. On the um, other hand, the Guianan boas are said to have a different background color that's kind of more of a grayish, purplish in color. Often they have a lot of pink on their sides. The shape of the saddles tends to be less symmetrical, more irregular. Often they have striping and other aberrancies. And often they'll have um, the tail won't be quite as long or red as in the Suriname. It'll be kind of a darker red color. Online, I've even read descriptions of the two claiming there, there are behavioral differences between Guianan and Suriname, with the Guianan boas being more aggressive and the Suriname boas being more docile. Is this true? Well, I can tell you that even within a litter of 100% full sibling boas of different localities, there's a huge range of physical descriptions. For example, I've had litters of Surinams where the, some of the animals have uh, very extreme peaking, some of them have moderate peaking in the saddles, some of them have round saddles. In these litters, um, the animals vary in color with some being more purplish, some being more tannish, and then the length and the brightness of the tail also varies with some having a long bright red tail, others the tail is kind of more of a dark brick red. So there's a lot of variability even in a litter coming from the same parents that are known to be uh, Surin pure Suriname boas. In addition, um, there are many descriptions of boas in the wild from a given locality that vary greatly in their overall phenotype. So within the same exact locality, you have a whole range of different descriptions. So although possibly you can use these descriptions um, to identify general tendencies, such as the saddles in the Guianan boas are kind of more blocky than in the Surinams. I think over, when an individual boa, they're really not very useful in accurately predicting the locality of that particular animal, whether it's from Suriname or Guiana, if there is indeed a difference. So I want to show you one more snake before I reveal the answers. This is BCC number five. So take a look at him and let me know if you think this is a Suriname or a Guianan. Okay, so I'm going to reveal the answers now. BCCs number one and five, this one, are Guianan BCC. And the numbers two, three, and four are Suriname BCC. You may have known that because you've seen my videos before. Or if this is your first time tuning into these videos, you might have guessed differently. Um, so don't feel bad if you didn't get the answers because, as I just mentioned, there's really no physical characteristics that are 100% uh, indicative of Suriname versus Guiana BCC. So I'll tell you from the top that this is a Suriname BCC. And the next topic I want to discuss 
is the fact that there really aren't any completely pure localities in captivity anyway. And it's not for the reason you might think, that, that they're misrepresented or um, fraudulently mislabeled. Let's say that you took a number of boas from a 100% verified locality in Suriname and you bred them in captivity. Are they still representative of wild Suriname boas? And the answer is no. The, as, as soon as you get them out of the wild and you start breeding them in captivity, they're going to be evolving in a different direction than animals that remained in the wild. And it's for a number of reasons. Number one, you had a very small sample of the boas from Suriname, and you were limited to just the animals that were exported. And then you may have selected and cherry-picked the ones that you thought looked the nicest and had the look that you wanted for your breeding project. And then once they're in captivity, some of them are gonna do better than others. They're just more suited to captivity. And so they are uh, preferentially breeding and more of the offspring are coming from those animals. And then which, with each successive generation, you're selecting for the ones with the nicest, most symmetrical saddles and the longest reddest tails. So after a few generations, can you even really say that it's a pure Suriname locality boa? Because what you have now is a captive bred representation of a Suriname locality boa. Is it really a Suriname type boa? I think the only way to 100% have a true representative of a wild Suriname boa would be to introduce uh, wild caught animals into your breeding project on a regular basis, just so that the animals are still representative of the wild population. And even then, for some of the reasons I mentioned, it really wouldn't be 100% um, accurate to say that they're representative of the wild Suriname boas. And so what I think is gonna happen over time is that we have um, pure locality boas kind of becoming almost like a morph. This is a selectively bred representation of a true locality boa. But for the reasons I just touched upon, it's really not quite the same thing as the wild uh, locality boas. And I don't think there's any problem with this. I don't think it means that the boas are not pure or they're you know, any less um, of a, you know, a great boa to have in your collection. But I think it's just the reality of breeding a boa in captivity. Um, so my Suriname boas, I, I will say offhand, I definitely am going for a certain look. You know, obviously I like the long red tail and um, like in this guy, um, I like, as I mentioned in some of my previous videos, I like kind of the more wild, dirty look. I don't like these really clean Suriname boas that have, you know, no markings. I like these splotches and freckles and all these uh, background colors. I think it looks really cool. So that's kind of the look that I'm going for in my Suriname projects. And I have basically four main bloodlines of Suriname I'm working with. Um, I only have one bloodline of Guiana. Um, even though, as I mentioned, that there are several reasons not to consider Guiana and Suriname as separate, I would never mix my Guiana boa with my Suriname boa. And the reason being is that my Guiana boa are so distinctive, I want to breed them in a different direction. So I showed you boas number one and five are my Guiana boas, and they have a real distinctive look. Um, they have much darker colors than many Guiana boas. The tails are more of a brick red, almost maroon in color, and they don't really resemble most of the boas um, that are uh, labeled as Suriname or Guiana. So I want to preserve that look. This is a bloodline that um, was produced uh, by Mike Eckert that I'm working with in my Guianans. I want to show you one more boa. This is a 2017 Suriname BCC. This is a half sibling to the male that I showed you in the last scene. And this gives you an idea of the look that I'm going for in my Suriname BCC bloodlines. So I know this video has given you some conflicting opinions and we didn't really form a definitive answer. Um, I would say from a purely scientific or physical description perspective, there's not really a difference between Guiana and Suriname BCC. However, as I mentioned, I am breeding for a specific look in my Guiana versus my Suriname BCC. 
and for this reason it's important that I maintain them as separate bloodlines. Um, what I would encourage you to do, especially if you're new to BCC and new to locality BOAS, is to go to Google Images and do an image search for the Suriname uh, red tail boa, Guiana red tail boa, and then the other types of red tail boas and other locality boas, just so you can study them and you can come up with your own conclusions about if there are differences and what the differences are. There are some very um, subtle differences, for example, between the North Brazilian and the Peruvian and the Venezuelan uh, BCC. And the only reason, to, or the only way to get familiar with these is by studying the picture. So you can go to Google, you can go to the Facebook BOA groups, um, you can go to online forums. There's just a wealth of different photographs of different locality BOAs available for you to study and to come to your own, con own conclusions. And this is the type of issue that it's really important that you come to your own informed conclusion rather than you know, listening to what I said or what some other you know, supposed expert tells you via one of these videos. Um, so that's my opinion there. As always, I'd love to hear your opinion. If you have a different opinion, please uh, feel free to comment below. Um, always, you can reach out to me on social media if you have any questions. I'd love to help. Um, I hope this was somewhat helpful. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy your BOAs.